Good morning. Welcome to our reflection today. We have been going around the churches of the benefice, but for various technical reasons, I'm back here in our dining room this morning at the vicarage, and it's lovely to be with you, and I hope you enjoy our short time together as we reflect on a passage from Matthew's Gospel this morning. The reading, the Gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 40. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Well, as well as being today the third Sunday after Trinity, today is also the day that would have been the day for uh, many ordinands in the Church of England around our cathedrals to have been ordained as deacon or as priest. It's the time of year that we often refer to as Petertide, the days around the Feast of St Peter, sometimes also celebrated as St Peter and St Paul. And however, of course, due to the, cor the coronavirus pandemic, our own curate-to-be, Jane, along with many others in the Church of England, will have to wait until at least September at the earliest for their ordination. So please do remember Jane and all of those in your prayers. Well, Peter, whose feast day occurs tomorrow, the 29th of June, probably has the most vivid portrayal of any of the disciples in the Gospels. Peter is somebody who probably most of us, if we're honest, can identify with. Peter doesn't always get it right. Sometimes he speaks before he fully understands what's actually going on. And of course we know that he even found himself denying Jesus after his Lord had been arrested. But as the old saying goes, his heart was in the right place. He wanted to love and to serve Jesus, and Jesus in turn recognises this. So although, for example, Peter had rashly promised often what he couldn't deliver, and of course ended up denying that he even knew Jesus, Peter was nevertheless commissioned to be a shepherd to the church. Feed my lambs, Jesus said to him, we read in John's Gospel. And Peter, we know at that point, was forgiven and restored. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Peter, whose, nick, whose name actually was really a nickname, meaning rock, was told by Jesus that he indeed would be the rock on which the church was built. And whether we take this to mean that Peter himself was the rock or whether Jesus was referring to his rock-like faith, it was a very significant statement by Jesus and it shows that he indeed recognised the sincerity and the very enthusiastic devotion and service of Peter. And we do know from the Acts of the Apostles, of course, that Peter indeed went on to be a very great leader of the church. Peter's portrayal in the Gospels is a very honest one, and we see this most of all in Mark's Gospel. There's a very strong tradition, of course, that Mark's Gospel, generally held to be the earliest of the four, was written in Rome and drew heavily on the personal memories of Peter. And a second century Christian writer actually says that Mark having been the interpreter of Peter, wrote down accurately, but not in order, all that he remembered of the Lord's sayings and doings. And Mark, he went on, had not heard the Lord, nor had been a follower of his, but later of Peter. And Mark, he says, wrote down what he heard from Peter. Well, if this is true, this is a, a very honest and real self-portrayal really indicating a man of integrity and humility and as such Peter is a huge inspiration and encouragement to all of us. Well today's Gospel reading at the end of Matthew 10 concludes the section that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks 
where Jesus sends out the disciples, including Peter, to proclaim, to heal and to minister. And the section today reflects the mission of the church to all of human society. It teaches us not to be exclusive or judgmental, but to have an open, generous and inclusive attitude to all people, ministering the love and the grace of God, the Lord who welcomes all who will open their hearts to receive him. And at this Peter tide, we remember also how we, like Peter, and those preparing to be ordained, are part of this mission. The words of the ordination liturgy for deacons are powerful in expressing the mission of the church in which we all share. And it says that deacons are to work with their fellow members in searching out the poor and the weak, the sick and the lonely, and those who are oppressed and powerless, reaching into the forgotten corners of the world that the love of God may be made visible. Well, these are words that will be spoken at some point this year to those who are being ordained as deacon in the Church of England, reminding them that their role is to work not just with the gathered church community, but also at the margins and at the very edges of our communities. And it's not just for those who are ordained to have this specific role. It's a ministry in which we all share and to, in which we all participate because we are all disciples of the Lord whose heart goes out to everyone. And so as we remember Peter on his feast day tomorrow and as we celebrate the ministry to which Jane and to all those ordained are called to, we also remember that the commission of Jesus given to his, his followers in Matthew 10 is for all of us and whatever role we've been called to in the church we are all ministers of the gospel we are all stewards of God's love and grace now the collect for the third Sunday after Trinity Almighty God you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts whereby we call you father Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And in the words of the fifth uh, Sunday after Trinity Collect, we remember today all those preparing for ordination and we pray especially for Jane as she begins her new role with us and as she looks forward to her ordination as deacon later in the year. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and be upon all whom you love this day and always. Amen. And as always, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to watch this reflection and may God's blessing be upon you and upon the work that he has called you to do this coming week and beyond. Thank you. Amen. <laughs>